Everybody, this is Doug Kenny from Relentless and Unstoppable. Today we have Walt Lloyd with us, a cinematographer from the film industry. How are you doing, man? I'm doing fine, Douglas. How are you? Doing absolutely fabulous. Happy holidays. Thank you, and back at you. Yeah. Where are you originally from? Well, I was born in South Carolina, at, uh, in Beaufort, South Carolina, which is where the the uh, Marine boot camp is Paris Island, but uh, only only was there for a few weeks. My dad was in the military, and then uh, we went to uh, Germany for a few years, and then uh, bounced around from one military base to another um, in this country. So uh, yeah, yeah, I, it's hard to say where I'm from. I actually consider myself more of a Californian than anything else because I lived in California longer than I lived anywhere else. Makes sense. It's a very beautiful state, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. And I, I was lucky because when I moved to California, I moved up north of San Francisco to the uh, Point Reyes area. And uh, it's uh, Tomales Bay. It's, it's like one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. I'll have to look into that. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. Lots to do there. If you like to be outside, to be wet, and to see beautiful scenery, <laughs> it rains a lot, but it's really, really awesome. Uh, Pretty cool. What made you get into the film industry? Um, actually... Uh, I started out I, studying music. I wanted to be a professional musician. And I was working my way through college and had a small accident in a, um, in a restaurant I was working at. I got my hand caught in the meat slicer. And it kind of ended my drumming career. And, uh, and it also ended my uh, career in the, uh, in the restaurant business because I couldn't walk by the meat slicer without thinking it was going to attack me. And uh, and so I, I went into the to a deep depression actually, um, uh, mainly because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do in my life. And uh, and uh, I was driving around in North Georgia up near Tallulah Gorge one weekend, and I saw a bunch of trucks pulled off to the side of the road on a logging trail right at Tallulah Gorge. And so I hopped out to see what was going on, and it was John Boardman's crew filming Deliverance. So I sat up there and watched them for a couple of days, um, you know, luring canoes and cameras down into the gorge. And I thought, wow, you know, there's a bunch of 50-year-old men playing around in the mud. That, that looks like fun. <laughs> and, uh, and so it took me a while, but I, I got into the film business uh, uh, by, by moving to San Francisco, actually. Um, I immediately got a job at a local television station after I saw that and, uh, and you know, became a, a video camera operator and then, uh, uh, then went to work for public television as a director, producer, and then moved to San Francisco and, uh, and worked in a production house and uh, and the production house I worked in actually had the Panavision distributorship. So so at night I would go into the camera rental room and I would take apart the cameras and put them back together and try to figure out how to how to make the cameras work. And uh, after a couple of years of that, I I, I said, okay, I'm uh, I'm going to be a, a, a camera assistant. And I I worked as a camera assistant for a couple of years and through a couple of lucky breaks I, I moved up relatively rapidly and uh, and became a, a DP um, so that's the story <laughs> kind of 
Yeah. That's the edited version. I, I could I could talk about it for years. Because <laughs> 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 it, it did take a decade for me to finally crack it, but uh, but I did. That's good to hear. I did not know about the meat slicer thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, I try to keep it buried a little bit because uh, it's a bad memory for sure. <laughs> when you, when you, when you have to take the tip of your finger to the hospital and ask them to sew it back on, it's never a good thing. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, you know, uh, uh, more than the tip of my finger, it, um, the meat slicer had these prongs on it and it punctured my hand and I couldn't bend my hand and I was a percussionist and, uh, it was pretty, you know, imperative that you're able to move your fingers and bend your hand. And, and for the, for about two years, I couldn't close my hand. So, so it was another career quest. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I, I did that and I, uh, I came to, uh, came to Los Angeles after a couple of years there uh, and uh, worked with a guy named Albert Pune, Payun, who, who unfortunately passed away yesterday. And, and uh, he, he gave me my break to shoot my first two films. And, uh, and after that, uh, I got a job uh, shooting Sex Lives and Videotape. And, and that kind of, uh, you know, s cemented the fact that, yeah, maybe I can, uh, maybe I can do this as a, as an avocation and a career. Yeah, that's really cool. You know, yeah. it's really cool that you got your an opportunity to go to LA and advance cinematography. Uh, yes. At the time, um, I, I, you know, if I could have done it somewhere other than, you know, Los Angeles, I would have, because I, I'm not fond of crowds, but, uh, but God knows I lived in LA from 85 to 1985 to just a couple of years ago. So, uh, I have many, many fond memories there. Yeah, for sure. How'd you land your role in the Santa Claus movie? Well, Interestingly enough, um, Jeffrey, Sil Jeffrey Silver was one of the uh, producers of it. And um, when I got my first two jobs through Albert Biden, um, they, they were with, they were Canon films. And Jeffrey at the time was uh, the head of production at, uh, at Canon. And... Um, and so he gave me, he, you know, he's actually hired me because he said, you know, Albert wanted you to shoot these films. I, I'll, I'll never forget that meeting because uh, he asked me if I had a, if I had a reel. And I said, <laughs> no, no, you know, I, I mean, I had worked as a camera operator on one of Albert's previous films, Radioactive Dreams. And, and, uh, and he said, uh, well, Albert really wants you to shoot this. He said, do you have a resume? And I said, is it DP? No, I don't have a resume. Mm -hmm. And then, then he said, well, will you work for, you know, such and such ridiculous amount of money? And I, I jumped at the chance because, you know, even though it's no money, it was an opportunity. And so that's how I, that's how I got the first two films. And then, uh, then I shot Six Lights and Videotape with Jeff, Jeffrey Silver Outlaw Productions, also um, produced. And uh, and then uh, years later, you know, uh, like six years later, um, when the Santa Claus came up, I, I only imagined that Jeffrey, you know, thank you, Jeffrey, threw, threw my name out there for, for the Santa Claus. And I, I met with John Pasquin and... Uh, and he hired me. So, you know, again, it was con contacts and luck, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's a lucky break to work on a Disney movie. Yes, it was. And this was an interesting Disney film, as you probably know, because uh, the budget was really, really small. I mean, it was, 
I think it was like twelve billion dollars. And as you can tell by the the effects, um, and, and and probably everything, but uh, but uh, you know, it made something like uh, oh yeah, it grossed one hundred and ninety million dollars the first year. Um, it was out, and God knows how much it's made since then. I mean, you know. It's amazing the amount of money that film has generated on the investment. Um, I heard, but I, you know, like I can't verify this, but I heard that at the time it was the highest grossing live action Disney film release. Um, I'm sure, you know, now that, you know, it's been eclipsed considerably, but uh, at the time, uh, it was pretty. Uh, it was a pretty monumental. Yeah, for sure. I heard good things about it. Yeah, 